On November 3, 2012, Paul Jr., the boat Dr. Robinson, lost his long-standing battle with cancer. And on that day, I lost my best friend. I don't have a major memory from my childhood that my grandfather wasn't a part of. He was at every birthday party, sporting event, ballet recital, anniversary party, birth, holiday, and even when my mom was in desperate need of a babysitter. I want to tell you a heroic story of how my grandfather never gave up with his fight. How he fought his hardest to the very end, but that isn't how the story goes. My grandfather fought as long as he could, but in the end, it just wasn't in the cards for him to get better. And I wish I would have noticed that before he passed away. For many years, my grandfather woke up early in the morning and went to work at Fields Buick, where he was the head mechanic for almost 14 years. He spent days and nights working on cars for people. When my mother's family moved back to West Virginia from Maryland, my grandfather worked at a few mechanic shops in Charleston and started the Elk River Muskie Club. He worked on boats basically any time he was free, and that is how he got the nickname, The Boat Doctor. After my mother and father got married, my grandfather waited impatiently for almost 18 years for my mother to have kids. My mother talks about how excited he was when she called and told him that she was pregnant. My mother talks about how excited he was when she called and told him she was pregnant with his then third grandchild. My mother tells us stories all the time about how excited my grandfather was and how he called her every day to see how she was doing. My cousins were like her adopted children and my grandfather always told us how he knew she would be a great mother by the way she took care of Bradley and Cody. From the moment I was born, my mother had someone who was always ready to babysit. I remember my mother being swamped at our floral and catering business and taking me to tutors in Clendenin and dropping me off to my grandparents for the day when she needed someone to watch me. Three years after I was born, my little brother Jackson came along and life changed a lot. I was in preschool the day my little brother was born and my grandfather was the one who picked me up. He told me about how in a few hours I would have a sibling and how things were going to change. Then, of all the things he could have told me, I remember him telling me I would have to share my pop. Pop is what I call my grandfather. And for someone who was so close with their grandfather, three-year-old me was not up to sharing him with anyone. I will never forget when he told me I had a little brother and we were going to the hospital to see him. He told me when I held him to make sure not to drop him and how I should always hold his head so he doesn't hurt his neck. My grandfather was diagnosed with small cell lung cancer. It is widely known to occur in individuals that, have, that smoke or have had a history of smoking. My grandfather may have never smoked, but apparently his body was the perfect environment for this type of cancer to thrive. They didn't find the cancer as soon as he went to the doctor. Initially, they found that he had fluid in his adrenal gland, and they treated it as fluid buildup for a small amount of time. They eventually ran enough tests and found out what was going on. When they did his first CAT scan, he lit up like Times Square on New Year's Eve. At one point in his treatment, he traveled to Duke University to receive treatment and see if there were any new procedures or tactics we could use to keep him around longer, if not beat it. I knew it wasn't good, but I never thought it was as bad as it actually was. In a total of three months, the man I had spent my whole life chasing around my yard and fishing off the dock with was rapidly slipping away. The last week my grandfather was alive was extremely hard. I was 14 years old and I had never lost anyone before. I never believed in a million years that I would lose my pop. The last time I saw him, he had started forgetting a lot of things. He didn't even know who I was until I told him. He looked defeated and devastated, and he hated that I was seeing him that way. I knew then things weren't good, but I also knew him with every fiber of my being that he would rally and be better. My mother describes the moment he passed away as the worst moment of her life, and I can only imagine it in that way. My mother explained that she had went to visit my grandfather at the hospice house in South Charleston, West Virginia, and that he was the same as the day before. She said that she told him she loved him and she would be back in a couple of hours after she went to buy me a new pair of cleats for softball that season. She wasn't even to the store when she received a call saying he had passed away. The very moment I knew I had lost my pop, I was devastated. He was my superman. My mother sat my brother and I down and explained everything that had happened. I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't fathom that the man who had taught me how to fish, drive a car, and stand up for myself was gone. The man who signed me out of preschool the day my brother was born and took me to meet my new best friend was gone. I would never see him again, never fish with him again, never drive a golf cart around the yard with him again, and I would never get to hug the most important person in my life ever again. Ever since my pop's passing, I've cherished every small moment in my life. I take as many pictures as possible and try my best to live my life to the fullest. My pop may never been physically present at any of my high school sporting events, but in May of 2014, when my high school softball team won the first female school championship at my high school, I knew he was there. I could feel him cheering with me, and I could just imagine him standing in the outfield with my mother and stepfather screaming at the top of his lungs for my team. 
My grandfather was my everything, and when I lost him, I lost my best friend. Superman, babysitter, fishing buddy, driving instructor, and most honest critic. My pop meant everything in the world to me, and I miss him every day. But knowing that I will see him again one day it makes it easier all the time. When my grandfather passed away, I was asked to write a piece for his obituary. The poem I wrote is called God's Most Amazing Angel. God has gained an angel, and I have lost the man that left a place in my heart that no one can understand. He taught me how to fish and drive a running car. He left me with more than I could ever need, but my heart is still filled with mystery. Why did God take him so fast, and why did he have to pass? I know he's in a better place, but why must he leave? My heart still searches for the answers, but I will never understand. He left without hurrying and never said a word. He fell asleep, never to return. So now when I look out upon the hill, I'll see the sign of him that bothers me still. The pain has subsided, and he is no longer here. But there's a special, but there's a special place in my heart where he will forever live.